Hi muckers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We've done it. We have finished another, well, almost, at the end of this video, but like, let's get excited for it because it's a lot getting through these Shane Dawson videos. We have finished now two of these Shane Dawson series, documentaries, whatever you want to call them, as I like to affectionately call them, long style vlogs. We have went through two of these now. This is the last episode of the Bunny Graveyard Girl series with Shane Dawson, which is about her no longer being relevant and nobody caring about her anymore. That's what Shane's pushing in this. And then we just finished the Eugenia Cooney one as well. That was actually one of my favorite videos I've ever made because I had a lot of opinions about it and I have a lot of opinions about this bunny, especially this last episode between Garrett and Bunny. Made me very angry, we're gonna get to it. So this last episode, there's two, this is three. I'm not gonna recap them, you can go watch them if you want. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel, it's called like Reviewing Shane Dawson, that was like documentaries. They're all there. Tell me below what one you want us to do next. If you're not subscribed, please make sure that you do. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so this last episode is called Ghost Hunting in a Haunted Toy Store. So this has been the lead up of the series. The first two episodes and the one before it that didn't involve Bunny but was them going to Texas where Bunny's from was basically leading up to Bunny's obsession with this antique retro haunted toy store. And it was basically where Bunny had bought a doll where she called it Robertina and it basically flooded her car. If you want to find out about that, you can watch the other ones. Flooded her car, made her house very cold, and was just a very threatening doll. And ever since that, she's been scared of this shop, and she very much treats it with respect, but it's still one of her favorite places. She just doesn't like, you know, playing around with the paranormal anymore. So, this is where they're going. So Shane was gonna go there with, you know, Shane, Rylan, Morgan, Andrew, and Garrett, and Bonnie, and her boyfriend, and Bonnie's assistant, and they were gonna do, like, spooky things in the shop, meaning they were going to, this is important before we get to it, they were just gonna, like, walk around the shop, talk about it. Bonnie made it very clear to Shane that ever since getting Robertina, the doll, she has been scared of this shop, and also scared of, you know, the paranormal, and the spirit world, and death, and she was very much so making it to Shane that she wants everything to be treated with respect and she also doesn't want to be involved in any summonings or anything like that. Skipping to the end, Shane completely goes against all of her wishes here and is putting the content before something that he has been explicitly told by Bunny, who is who he's making the series about, which goes to show that he's an awful filmmaker whenever it comes to dealing with the people he's making films about, because now Eugenia and Bunny, there have been many different instances in both series where they have explicitly said that they're uncomfortable with something and Shane does it anyway because it would be the most entertaining thing in the video. So the video starts off with Shane saying they're in like a car park of the toy store here for context, the video starts off with Shane saying that he's just pissed on someone's food. I'm not going to give you any context for that. I really don't feel the need to. So then they check into their hotel and there's already multiple James Charles references with like sisters and hi sisters and there's clips that cut to and from James Charles speaking just randomly. I just thought it was ironic and it didn't age well and it just goes to show that at a time they all were friendly together. So then it goes on, and after a bunch of banter, I've commented, it cuts to five hours later where Shane is handing out paranormal lighting to all of them, which is like the lights that, that I really shouldn't be doing. I should not be doing that either, fuck me. The lighting is like on here, and it's, you know, those like tunnel wands and then big torches. We're not going to be doing that. And he's handing it out to Morgan, Ryland, and Garrett, and Andrew's filming. And they're in the hotel, they're talking about that they're going to the shop. So again, if you remember in the last episode, it ended with Bunny telling them about the shop and Shane being like, we'll see you there tomorrow. So. So the shop that we were told about is actually called Uncommon Objects. Now, I actually can't believe I didn't do this before filming this video, but I'm just really quickly going to write this into Google. Uncommon Objects, Texas. So this is a shop that is still open. It opens from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., 1602 Fort View Road, Austin, Texas, 78704, United States. It says that it's a quirky shop. 
featuring an electric array of antiques including jewelry, taxidermy, gadgets, and toys. So there is a lot of Yelp reviews of it. It seems to be a very popular place with most of the reviews saying friendly staff, amazing prices, really cool. Other people are saying that it's expensive. Someone said that the staff are very rude. Okay, we actually have a lot of mixed opinions there. But anyway, it's called Uncommon Objects. Still open. I would love if anyone's watching this video who lives near it to let me know like how close you are to it. I would love for you to go and we could talk about it. I would love to see like one of the muckers perspectives in the shop because it will 100% be less like traumatized than Shane Dawson going so we can put like light editing clips if you know what I mean. So then they arrive at the area and Shane thinks that a house is the shop. So it just cuts to a clip of Shane like shining his like torch in these people's houses and a very, very, very weird moment. And it was actually Ryland that started calling like Shane and Andrew out for, for doing this to the house. And he made reference to the fact that everyone in Texas has guns and that they're probably gonna get shot without Bunny being there. And they make this reference about Texas so many times where they're like, it's so unsafe here, it's so unsafe. Someone's gonna come out with a gun like not like that and I'm like I don't think the people of text I'm not gonna speak for them would appreciate those stereotypes because you can say a stereotype about somewhere and it doesn't make it true whatsoever and I have a lot of friends who do live in Texas and they don't live by that that so that is quite offensive but anyway Rylan calls the mic for it I've written down Shane is so annoying to watch during this in the previous two episodes, he's been quite annoying, but this one is definitely the most annoying because he's trying to be like spooky and over the top and it's just very try-hardy. He's so over the top about the slightest normal thing that makes something happen. Like if a noise happens or a light happens, he's trying to make the entire episode seem as scary as possible whenever it's truly not that scary and it comes across really try-hard. For reference, he gets scared by the following things. A van, a wall, a gate, Garrett, Bunny, and Texas in general, the street lights as well. So just anything, he would be like, ah, ah, ah. and it really downplays what actually could be deemed as scary or paranormal whenever you're like trying to, ah, ah, ah. and I get trying to be entertaining and stuff like that, but whenever you're trying to come across as like a ghost hunter and stuff like this, whenever you're freaking out over the randomest shit, it makes it look whenever you actually do freak out over something worthy then as you're just being dramatic again. So again, He's bad at these series as well. So Bunny drives up, she's been given the keys to the shop and all of the grip are now in there while the shop is closed. So this is very late at night, um, it's very dark in the streets, the workers have given Bunny the keys, I assume she paid them a lot of money and Shane probably too and they're the only ones in it right now and Bunny has the keys with her assistant and the shop owners are not there. Which is why Shane gets away with doing so many things because he knows that the owners aren't there and he can get away with acting like a jackass in the shop. Shane is literally pointing at everything and going, me, and it's so annoying and frustrating. I really don't feel the need to dwell on that any further, but it's just like, me, me, that is so me. And his humor, like I said, it's like a 35, what age is this man? Something 30 year old man cosplaying is like, a, he's 34. Wow, I was actually quite close. Cosplaying is like a 13 year old girl's humor. It's really cringe. So I wrote, and I really want to put a warning here, I'm going to be defending Garrett towards the middle to end of this video. But as of right now, and I really like Garrett, damn he pissed me off for the first couple minutes of this video whenever they went into the shop. I wrote, Garrett is being quite annoying to be honest. He's picking up everything and playing with it as much as possible. And as much as I like him, he's very much so trying to lighten the unnecessarily like dark and heavy mood. So while he's very annoying for the first 10 minutes of this because he literally is picking up like the stupidest shit and being like, oh, and like, blah, 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 and I really do like Garrett and I understand the humor. And I also understand that he's doing it because Shane Dawson is trying to make the mood of this so dark dark and creepy and guards trying to make it light and whatever but the contrast just doesn't work together and it's very awkward and it kind of makes Shane look a lot more like normal than Gara in it and it's always the other way boy and I really do like Gara and I'm going to be defending him very soon you know I like him but he was he was quite annoying at the start of this episode all right and then Shane tells Garrett to scare Bunny because she's not easily scared which will be a disaster we'll get back to later on so keep in mind, Shane Dawson, this is very important to listen to, Shane Dawson brings Garrett into the bathroom and says, we need to scare Bunny. 
She says that she's never been scared before. I'm giving you the mission to scare Bunny. Remember that. Shane Dawson explicitly tells Garrett Watts to scare Bunny. It's on camera, Shane included it, because he said that Bunny doesn't scare easy, so Garrett needs to scare her. Remember this point. All right, the shop reminds me exactly like a place called um, in Brighton called Snipper's Paradise. If anyone from like the East Sussex area where I'm from, we're not from but live, um, no Snipper's Paradise. The shop was very much so giving that. It's very like old antique stuff, and I hate being in Snipper's Paradise because I really don't like the smell and air and just I don't like walking around other people's stuff. I really don't even like pe being in people's houses. If I'm gonna be honest. I just like my own space. Something about it makes me very uncomfortable. I don't like being surrounded by other people's stuff. And I certainly don't like being surrounded by other people's stuff whenever they're not here anymore or there's like a haunted connotation. I do not like museums other than like art museums. I really, I do not like that stuff. So Bonnie is very scared of the place and I actually do relate to her on that. I'm not scared of these kind of places, but I just don't enjoy being there. I feel quite uncomfortable and uneasy. All right. Bunny's boyfriend says that he's a skeptic and he doesn't believe that all of the stuff that Bunny believes in. And he also does not like the dolls, uh, you know, display that we talked about in the previous episodes that Bunny has. But she enjoys them and whatever makes her happy, he is fine with. Aw, sweet moment. So Shane asks Bunny if she's ever touched a dead body and she says no. And Shane doesn't believe her when she says this. And she also says that she doesn't believe in funerals after Shane says, you know, when you go to funerals. And it was kind of this big conversation we don't need to get into. Um, the like pretense of it, but we'll talk about it after. So then Shane's like, why don't you like funerals? Like you like stuff from deceased people. You like old stuff. Like why don't you like funerals? And I thought it was actually a pretty good question given the context. It didn't really make any sense. And then Bonnie talks about the fact that when people die, she likes pretending that they're still living. And that's what she does. She doesn't process, she doesn't grieve, she just pretends that they're still living. So this is a moment where she's very uncomfortable on camera. Again, it's very easy to tell. Shane will be talking to her right here and she'll just look into the camera and she'll start giggling and she starts moving about. It was very awkward to watch, it was very uncomfortable. And she says that she's living in denial and she talks about when her uncle passed away and she just pretends that he's still like farming in the garden was the example she used. She said that she understands that he's passed away, but she'll not allow herself to have a last memory of someone being their funeral, like an open casket, like she'll never allow herself to do it. And it was just very weird to me because Shane brings up the point then that's like, you, so you don't like that, but you love graveyards. And it really was just a really bit of a like confusing point, but... She does go on to say that when she was obsessed with graveyards, it was during the most like depressing era of her life. So I understand the context actually, but it was just kind of like a little bit of a conflicting like five minute conversation between Shane and her that wasn't structured well at all. Even I got confused writing my notes down. It was like back and forth, back and forth. All right. So Shane says, why does she like dead things? As in like animals, taxidermy and stuff, but she doesn't like death. She says she likes to give dead things new life. She likes if there's like a broken thing from a museum, she likes to bring it to her house and give it new life instead of throwing it in the bin. Or if she sees something in one of these haunted shops, you know, it's an old, old doll. Who did it belong to? Was it a young child? Maybe it wants a new life. Like this kind of stuff. Which again, um, that kind of stuff terrifies me personally, but if it makes her happy, then babe, go for it. Bonnie talks about how hanging out in graveyards, again, was something that she really loved at one point, but she just couldn't do anymore. And Bonnie talks about the poo-poo ghost, literally like the shit ghost, and it was originally stemming in the shop from a bad smell in the shop bathroom, and when someone brought up and made a joke about the poo-poo ghost, because there was no one going to the bathroom, it was just kind of a smell, uh, once the person said it, the main mirrors in the shop all smashed. The, the mirrors smashed, and ever since that moment, people have been scared to go in the bathroom and scared of the poo poo ghost and um, Bonnie said that she just doesn't want the ghost to ever feel disrespected. She doesn't want any spirits in there to feel disrespected. That is not why she's there. She's just there to make a fun video. And Bonnie confronts Shane and says to stop pushing ghosts or trying to upset them because Shane is making a lot of jokes about like the poo poo ghost to her face and ghosts in general and I don't believe it and I'm with your boyfriend and it was very disrespectful and she was basically saying I don't appreciate what you're doing. I brought you here. I don't want to tolerate it, especially after just telling you about my experience with the doll, Robertina. Shane pulls Garrett into the bathroom. This is one of the worst moments of the video. Not the worst, but one of. Shane pulls Garrett into the bathroom and he literally just starts shit-talking Bunny. 
And he also included this in the video for some reason. A video that then Bunny's gonna watch. Like, he just starts shit-talking her. He says how she's so over the top and she's like being annoying and he's saying that Shane can't do this, do that, even though it was already agreed before she brought in there and he's complaining about it, complaining about her. And he basically says that he doesn't care uh, about that and he wants to summon ghosts. Which again goes to show that he doesn't care about the people he's making these series with. He's just there to make like entertainment and it's not even entertaining. It just shows him up in a bad light. So then Shane starts making fun of the poopy ghost with Gar and Andrew in the bathroom. Including saying, what a stupid fucking name you have, stupid ghost, la la la, stupid fucking ghost, come out, come out, stupid, like this kind of stuff. And it's really just awkward and disrespectful to watch, even if you don't believe it, even just knowing the previous clips from Bunny, how upset it made her to then, it, it was just, it, bad. It was bad. It was also really cringy. Gar and him are being so cringe and so disrespectful considering Bunny just opened up to them about her trauma to do with ghosts and paranormal activity and she was the one who brought them there under the pretense that they don't do any of this stuff. Shane says to Garth that they need to turn off all the lights and start messing with Bunny. So Shane is always the one telling Garth to mess with Bunny. Remember this moment. Shane says to Bunny that he's going to turn off all the lights and her energy immediately changes. Immediately changes. And she says, we are not summoning or doing anything like that. And Shane goes like this. Oh, we would never. Looking into the camera, doing like a fucking shitty version of The Office. Ooh, I need to start rewatching The Office. Um, Bunny says they can turn off the lights if they're respectful. Again, a moment that gets ignored by Shane. So they go off turning lamp by lamp in the shop, like literally like hundreds of lamps they're having to turn off one by one. It gets darker and darker and darker. So now the only light in the entire shop with all these people in it is just one torch. And now I say that I really do feel bad for Bunny in this moment. Not for long, but in this moment. Shane puts a flashlight on himself and says that he's going to start summoning the ghosts right in front of Bunny. And he wants to talk to the dead and Bunny literally please no. And then says that as long as Shane's respectful, then it'll be okay. Shane is putting Bunny's peace of mind last and ooh, scary, spooky, ooh, horror vlog first. And it wasn't even good. So then a quote from Bunny says, this just got serious and so unfun so fast, Shane. So again, another example of Shane making his guests feel uncomfortable. Garth says that he wishes a spirit would come into the doll, the Benjamin doll he's holding of a child. He wishes a spirit would come into it. Again, a very disrespectful thing to say to Bonnie, who literally just told you her trauma with her Robertina doll, and you're saying that you want a spirit to come into your doll. And Bonnie literally just doesn't even take it that deep and goes, I really just don't hope that happens to you because you don't want something like that. And again, it was just very, very, very awkward. So then a big noise happens. A big noise, a big vibration. They all freak the fuck out. And a quote from Bunny says, I've just had the worst year of my life and I'm not playing this game. I'm getting out of here. And she leaves. So Bunny's gone for a couple minutes. And again, Shane is like scared, but he's like playing it up like, well, was it you? Was it Bunny? Was it you? Garrett, was it you? Keep in mind that he told Garrett to scare Bunny. Spoiler, this was Garrett. He plugged like an amp into a speaker and it made a big noise and a vibration. Shane told Garrett to do this. So Shane and Bunny have a confrontational moment where basically she's at the end with dealing with Shane. She's like arguing with him. She's like, I've already told you we don't want to do this. And a quote from Bunny says, I'm not here to summon things. I was here to film a YouTube video and I'm leaving because it's now got too real and too freaky. And Shane continues to ignore her and starts hyping up the noise being like, it wasn't, it wasn't me. I'm so scared. This kind of stuff. And after all the lights are turned on, Garrett admits that it was actually him that did it by plugging it in and he was trying to like scare everyone, um, but he, he was doing it in like a funny kind of way, in a way that Drew had done to him months ago in a hotel trying to scare him playing like a ghost sound through the speaker. Again, Shane told him to scare Bunny two or three times. And now, the vibe of the video is immediately awkward and Shane is now turning on Garrett and he's angry at Garrett and being like, Garrett, I can't believe you would do this. Garrett, you know that, Gar that Bunny's like this. And so Bunny comes in and she's now in tears, she's crying, she's hysterical and Shane's like, I Bunny, I just can't believe you would do that. And take literally, literally making Garrett look like the worst person in the world. Garrett is so awkward. He's so uncomfortable. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I thought I, I thought I was just making like a funny moment. I, and I feel so bad for him in this moment. So it gets worse. So Bunny's now crying and Shane, Bunny, Garrett are face to face. And Shane is blaming Garrett saying, I can't believe he would do that. Bunny, I'm so sorry. This was so 
I'm so uncomfortable, this was so inappropriate of him, even though Bunny doesn't know that Shane had been saying the entire time that they need to scare Bunny. Bonnie's assistant and Garrett have a fight outside, and it's very intense. So again, Garrett is now taking the fall for something that Shane wanted Garrett to do. Shane says it was an oopsie on Garrett's behalf. So again, he's not taking any accountability. And he blames him when he's talking to Bonnie, and I just went, he's so fucking fake. Bonnie says, or Shane says to Bonnie that he was trying to get her to trust him, and he hopes that Garrett scaring her didn't ruin that. So again, not taking any responsibility. Then Bonnie opens up about how all day... She's been planning on scaring them. And at that moment, I was just like, girl, girl, I don't care. I wish she scared you more. I was on her side up until that moment where I was like, you know what? Shane and Garrett shouldn't have done that. She cries, she fight, blame, and then she turns around and was like, I was actually planning on scaring you all day. After all this bullshit that you, we, you made us listen to you about you being so scared, Robertina doll, and blah, blah, blah. Girl, what the fuck is wrong with you? So then, all of the arguing with Garrett was for nothing. And this makes her look so fake and so fucking annoying. So then Garrett literally stands up for himself, rightfully so, and is like, How am I the bad guy if you were planning on scaring us all day? And she doesn't really say anything, but she really fucking pissed me off by the end of this series, and I was team Garrett all the fucking way. So the ending of the video is Shane saying to Bunny uh, different ideas for a new YouTube video that includes uh, ghost stories, and they film blah blah blah, the video ends with them filming ghost stories in the shop. But then the final clip is Shane talking about Bunny, he's like filming it on his iPhone, like editing, very like apology video-esque, and it cuts to then him talking and saying that Bunny is gaining views and subscribers since he started posting the series. So again, he's being like, I'm the best, I'm the greatest, I've saved another person's career. The problem with this is that it was a fake audience that she was gaining because it was people who were subscribing to her only to see a couple videos of Shane and then immediately unsubscribe or immediately not watch anything, which puts her YouTube channel in a worse state because to the algorithm she's gaining hundreds of thousands of subscribers but not getting any views, killing her channel even more. So the overall point in this was Shane ruined Graveyard Girl's channel by trying to save Graveyard Girl's channel. But he wasn't trying to save it, he was just trying to make a series making a fool of another YouTuber, like always. So then he starts crying, and anytime he cries, just so fake, he's like, she, I just can't believe that this would happen, and this is something I'm so proud of, and she has the work to do, and you know, she'll keep the audience. So at least he's aware that he's saying that, you know, I'm gonna ignore the fake crying, but at least he's aware that he's putting the responsibility on her to keep the audience. He says, this is the most real thing I've ever made on YouTube. It's also the most fucking shit thing you've ever made. So, LOL, funny note is at the end, he says how many YouTubers have reached out to him to congratulate him on the series, and the YouTubers that he shows, wait for it, Laura Lee and Taddy Westbrook. And I thought that that was a perfect, perfect ending to the series. Having Taddy Westbrook and Laura Lee, two people that you would then go on to try ruin their careers, vouch for you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, muckers, the end of another Shane Dawson series. We've done the three episodes. If you want to watch it from the start, you can go on my playlist on my YouTube channel. I have the series of them on there. I have the Eugenia one. Let me know which one you want next. This was super fun. I've been really enjoying this. Thank you for joining me. Let me know your opinion on this down below. I am definitely Team Garrett, and I'm not Team Bunny. I love you all, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.